Hi there, I'm Simon from Old Planet Studios. I've got something really exciting today. If you're serious about stop motion, you're going to want to hear about this. So what we're talking about today is winders. Now, most of us have used, oh, I don't know, something like this, which is a uh, helping hands, sort of slightly adapted, and you can stick something on the end, and that helps as a rig, a simple rig, or a more complicated rig, which is something like that, which has just got some uh, a ball and socket joints on it and helps you to move things around. And of course, you can use wire as well and lots of things, but you need a nice solid base for it. And mostly we've seen winders, which are these sorts of things like this, used by the big studios. Leica uses them a lot and they're fantastic things because you can move the puppet along very tiny increments and the whole thing is fantastically well controlled. So mostly these things are very expensive. This particular one I imported from the United States and it cost me around a hundred pounds. Um, they're some made by Edu Puertas in uh, Spain. Lovely metal things. I think they're about 160 quid. They're not cheap. Uh, this one incidentally was made by Thomas Nickel, Quantum Cat Winders. There's a link um, down below. And I'm really fond of it. It's quite small and compact. It works really nicely. It's quite solid. It's got little locking wheels so that you can fix it and it's not going to go anywhere. The most expensive component in this is actually the rack. Now the rack is metal and I think they're around 20 pounds each. Ideally if we could have something printed out it will be infinitely cheaper. And surprisingly that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. So this is a 3D printed winder, which is absolutely superb. It's been designed by a guy called Luke Bossard, and he has kindly allowed me to beta test them. Let's have a closer look at them. Okay, so here's the Quantum Cap winder. Uh, this is the American one and you can see it's very nice and compact. It's got a metal locking knob. It's, this is a printed out uh, adjusting knob. There's a silicon o-ring around it which enables you to grip it quite nicely and it moves along very nicely there. Locks off pretty firmly. That's great. Very compact, um, very nicely made. The end fitting is something that I'm not very fond of. Um, this is just a sort of lumpy bit that's fixed on the end and I've always bodged it. I suppose the problem is that it's not metric fittings and this is an, an issue with this one um, that some of the fittings are uh, some of the fastenings are, are metric and some aren't and so you have to have two sets of allen keys and it's all a bit of a faff so I've sort of bodged things and um, I must get round to brazing something properly and making a decent end fitting for it. So here is the base of it now the base is a bit thin and it's not great. You can see it's not, not brilliant. It's not very heavy. Um, so of course you can use it with a weight and stick a weight on it or you could screw it down to um, a, a solid base and then move that around and that's good. But you know, in, in itself it's not a brilliant design frankly, but it is at least nice and rigid. That's important that the upright should be held really rigidly. Um, there's a little bracket here on the back that you can see and that joins the two boxes together. You can also obviously use a single winder box and then use that bracket to fix to something else, some part of your set or whatever. So that's quite a handy little um, addition there. The major disadvantage of this one is, is very simply this, that once you let go the locking knob it will tend to drop on the vertical axis. Now that is a bit of a problem if you suddenly lose your place. So just to compare the two now, you can see they're pretty much the same length box and pretty much the same width as well. Um, this one is a little bit fatter and that's because of its variable friction brake. But it's also because the rack is a little bit bigger in dimensions generally. The teeth are also at an angle here that's called helical um, and it makes for less backlash. 
it works very smoothly. You can adjust these two nuts here on the back and there's a little plate inside, there it is, it's that little white bit there, that's a bit of PTFE and what that does is to just bear against the back of the rack and that means that the vertical one, and here it is, you can let go and nothing happens. So you've got a little bit of extra friction there just to stop it from, from moving. Okay, so coming on to the base of this one, what you've got here is a little wedge that holds the base in. I've got a little one and a half mil um, piece of plastic here, which I needed just to get it really secure. And just take that off. So there's a lovely locking nut there, and there is the base itself. So it's nice and rigid, but the best feature of this is that you can use these barbell weights. So you can use a big one, you can use a small one, whatever you like, and that will fit on there and it will lock down onto there. If you don't want to use that, you've got some holes so you can fix it down. So I think that makes it really, really versatile. I love that. And I, I, in fact, I like it so much that what I'm in, trying to encourage Luke to do is to make some other fitments to go in so just have a little uh, rig or you could maybe have a pointer or something like that. So if we have a look inside you can see it's fairly simple. Um, there are two gears here which work on the on the rack. The, the, there's a follower gear which is this one here and then the one which is controlled by the knob which is that one there. Now they're both they both have um, miniature ball bearings in them. This one they're located in the gear and this one they're actually in the casing um, and that helps to run for them to run smoothly. This here is the is the brake and you can see that's pressed up against the uh, the rack there and there are there are captive nuts in here for attaching the accessory plates and uh, for mounting the the winder it's relatively simple and straightforward. It's very simple to print off. I mean, he even provides a spanner. The rack has a 6mm threaded rod that runs right the way through, fastened with a nut on the end. It makes it nice and rigid and solid. And on the other end, there's room for a 3mm threaded rod, and uh, that's held with a captive nut inside and a nut on the outside to make it nice and rigid. Very, very simple and elegant. These winders don't have a bracket that fits them together. They just fit together like that, and a bolt goes through one to the other. There we go. And that holds them there like that. That is, is really neat. What they also have is a couple of extra holes here. And hopefully those can be, those are visible. Anyway, the holes in the back of the box mean that you can add some other brackets or some other attachments to it. So if you want the winder to be mounted solidly, say on your base, you can fix it down and operate it just as a single, single winder like that. Um, if you wanted it at right angles, you could mount it like that. So this becomes incredibly versatile. Okay, so this is what surely sets it apart, is the fact that you can print it in any color you like. So you want it to disappear against a green screen, there you go, print it off in green. If you wanted it to be blue, make it blue. Rather than printing off extra boxes in different colours, which is a lot more expensive, what I'm actually doing is printing off more racks in different colours. So the printer at the moment, which is whirring away in the background, is actually printing out a light grey rack. And then that will contrast against my dark puppet that I've got, and then uh, I can key it out very simply. 
I'm a bit of a newcomer to 3D printing, but I didn't find these things at all difficult to make in standard PLA. He's put a lot of thought into designing the winders, including things like these little five-sided inserts that help to hold the rack together as you assemble it. Okay, I hope you've found this interesting. I think these things are really excellent, and I think in a few years' time, just about everybody's going to be using them. If you're downloading the files, do remember to donate to the uh, to the designer because I think he's done a fantastic job on this. And he's also talking about extra bits and pieces. There's going to be motorised winders. There's going to be brackets to fit to it. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.